The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Dealers is our and the Dow is unch and the S&P is up one. Let's just go through a couple of things. I was showing this to uh, in the den uh, before my show. As I come on, I usually do a notation of what I'm trading here, the E-mini. And I put in a cup formation in the two-minute chart. And then I put a little hat on the E. That usually means that you've used up your down arrow and that is not a brand new buy mode. That is the end of that. And therefore, it gets an inverted head of peak E. I put in a rectangle formation and I put in a little cup formation for a handle. And it broke the left side low of 27.84, trading right now 27.81. And that's saying to me a couple of things. I'm just talking technique here. Uh, these are the things that we want to be looking for. This is the E mini, it's up 250. And if you look at uh, the sideways pattern that we've had, both in the Dow, the S&P, the, most of the indices over the last couple of uh, days, since that really strong, what is it, Wednesday, said it was Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, since Monday's really big candle, uh, Morabosi candle, in the sense that you're looking at a particular candle that has no wick, it opens, in this case, gaps up, and then closes at the high, very big green candle, as I say, no wick, opens that's the low of the day and closes, and that's the high of the day. I look at that, there are very different interpretations, but I'm looking at this and I'm saying my interpretation is on my historic basis. In my background, I haven't got it all notated, it's just in my mind, it says that every time I've seen this particular, I only look at about two or three candles in the whole litany of candlestick charting that, uh, was introduced here, um, oh, what, about three decades ago? I think so. And um, in this particular instance, I'm looking at this candle saying, this is where it's slow, the, the upside momentum is like an, a final thrust, and then it kind of slows down. I always have this, it's a terrible image, I can't help it, it's just the image I have, and I guess it goes back to my early motorcycle racing days, and not like uh, Dave White used to actually race on the track, I was just street guy. Um, and uh, when there was a little accident, like the one time that the uh, front suspension, the one side kind of broke, and I went kind of tumbling along. As you're going along, you see these little pieces flying off. Uh, they're, um, they're the side mirrors and then the uh, handlebar grip and you know, all that stuff. And the Nothing comes to a halt until that final gravitational slowdown. Either you hit something or you just slow down. And that's kind of like this. You've got that thrust to the upside. And and it can't stop immediately. It didn't hit a tree. It's just got natural uh, momentum going. You have to wait for that momentum to slow down. And this is what you've got, except in an hour and 50 minutes, we've got the Fed coming out. So the Fed gets something else going here. What it says is, there's been a spectacular rally from 21,712 to the high of today, which is uh, 25,937, just 43 points off the high that was made back at peak E, the little doji, right in the corner you see it, that December little spike on the third that failed, and then it came tumbling down. So we've gone all the way back to that. Now, it's interesting because that took, I should have counted it before, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15 sessions. 15 sessions, you go down to the 26th of December from 25,980. You, you drop a little bit. You drop 4,200 points. From that 4,200 points, we've come up. But look at this. I just said 15 sessions. Let's just count them. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21. Let's call it about 47 sessions. You've got a multi, you've got three times as long to get to the same level. And that's saying, based on the MACD and the stochastic, it's a fabulous technical action, but it's taken much longer. 
So, with that said, the Dow's up seven. We're going to go to our first call. We've got Ben in Tallahassee. Usually, I keep him waiting for a long time before I look down to see who's called. Ben in Tallahassee. How are you? Ben wasn't even expecting to be called so soon. Ben is actually doing something right now. Ben, say hi if you're there. Never expected it in this first section. Ben, you just yell, I'm here anytime you want. The Dow is up nine now. I want you to show you something very interesting. The IWM. Hello, Basil. Ben, Basil. you're there. How are you? There we go. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I think there's a little button that wasn't pushed. So, um, oh, I'm great. Yeah, you know, your, your little commentary there. It, it, who would have guessed, right? Um, down 4,000 and up 4,000 in two months. I mean, just mind-boggling. Well, so 4,000 4, points, Ben. 4,000 uh, points in 15 days. But oh, almost yeah. two months to right. get back. But it's incredible because we've had one year's worth of normal, a, a really good year is being, has been done in less than two months. All right, go ahead. You've got a question. Yeah. No, it, it, it really is incredible. So um, two-part question. <clears throat> SMH, what I'm thinking about doing, strongly considering a small portion in an option, and my question to you is a, a, a naked put, uh, and you know, are you, what are your thoughts on March versus April? So, you know, March obviously is going to be a lot less expensive. Yeah, let me just give me um, one second. Yeah, let me look at my calendar. We've got... So we got Friday the first. Oh, Friday the first. That means it's an even shorter week, three weeks. Well, three no, Fridays. Meant, it, would, it would be the. Uh, it would be like a, I think 15th. it was the third week of March. It'd so you'd like go. No, it would be the third. third it would be the third Friday. That's fifteenth of March. <clears throat> yeah. Or April. Right. Okay. Let Let me do this because if anything's going to happen, okay. Ugh, let me give a scenario. Let's imagine the Fed comes out, and the next thing we know. The Dow is trading at 26,130, and the S&P is at 20, let's just make it 2,800 for a round number, right, by this afternoon or tomorrow morning. What that does basically is it recycles in a sense that it raises the base of support proportionately, and at the same time, it will bring in a whole bunch of people either cover, short covering or brand new buyers. And that would say to me that if that price holds, if the 2600s holds all the way through Friday, then what we've got is basically what I would call like an instant restock. We've got a recycle. And that recycle says that until we get really bad news, you're not going to go, you'd have to go down. Let's, let's take the, the Dow, for instance. You'd have to go down a thousand points to 1500 points just to get back to where you were a couple of days ago or a week ago. So that, that, that's just going to have to be a lot of bad news. That's number one. Number two is in the semiconductor index, <clears throat> acting quite well today. Yesterday was two days was nothing. Today is actually quite nice. It went to 104.03. I'm looking at, oh, we've got a break coming up. You know, I'm going to, if you got just a moment, I got two things I want yeah. to do during the break. I want to look at well, some Yeah, the, the, stuff. the second part was, was, you know, regardless of, the Fed and the and the uh, and the China, you know, technically, are, aren't we at a point where it doesn't matter? Something. It, it, it I'll talk about that up. as soon as we get back. Okay. Revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're back. We're back with Ben in Tallahassee. We're looking at the SMH. That's the semiconductor ETF trading at 103.61, up to dollar 18. So, Ben, I just went through. That's what I wanted to do in the break. I went through Intel. Intel is down. Um, it's down 0.18. Not a big deal, but it's at F slash C. I looked at LRCX, which is LAM Research. It's at a peak D and holding tight. Uh, I looked at applied materials. These are the big ones, except there's one that really has been a, a, a monster. And so um, applied material is under the 200 period moving average after Doji Peak A. And Xilinx, one of my favorite stocks that we've never owned, I don't know why not, because it's just been a spectacular winner for years and years and years. It's trading with a potential Peak D here at... Um, 119.78, and just a month ago, it was in the 90. So this is a spectacular move. So I don't, I'm not even sure what's get, getting the uh, semiconductor index to this plus one, uh, plus 82. That is, oh, whoops, wrong one. And so I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, if it wasn't for the Fed announcement today, everything I'm looking at suggests. Look at the single leg A in the semiconductor from the weekly chart holds the 200-period moving average exactly. It makes a left side, right side price time within two weeks, almost exact, at 80.71. Retest the 80.71 back from, I think, two, summer of 2017. Now you've got a single leg A up that is up um, 20, 20 points, 23 points. You, you would expect under normal conditions that to be some kind of a pullback. A pullback. Well, I guess that's my point. That's my point, Basil, because I, I'm mixing that in with, I think you had some pretty good, you know, I guess let's just call it general intelligence, you know, not like you got inside stock trading advice, but but that the semis are are due for a breather, and 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 you know in 19, and and that was, you know, prior to this 24% run up. So I. I'm kind of thinking we're a little bit in the world of make-believe right now. So so now this is what I want you to get to. If there is going to be a pullback, there are two ways to do it. One is that the Fed comes out and the market kind of says, you know, we're not quite sure what the Fed is going to do because they're talking about um, the data that they're looking at. Actually, the data they're looking at should still be pretty darn good. So they should be looking out towards possibly raising rates, even though I don't think they need to, but that's something else. Now, here's the other thing. 
if I'm looking at this, it's either going to be just a sudden surprise sell-off, and then you start getting the bad news, and that would say that the, the SMHs have to go down below 99. 97 is going to be the big test of support, and then a break of that goes to the 96, 95 area. So it's either really sudden, or there's just going to be a three-week slow grind to the downside as we see maybe the commodity area becomes favorites, and all of a sudden money starts coming out of the other sectors and goes into things like copper, like the metals that have really taken off. That might be a scenario that we're looking at. So I'm going to say to you, the April you'll pay more for, but you'll have more time. If this is going to work, the third Friday of uh, March, you should already be down at the 97 to 96 area. So if it does, if it, we're still in 100, you know, 100 or 99 and haven't really broken down, I'm not sure April is going to make that much difference at that point. So I'm inclined to think that it would be, I'd go for the nearer time frame. Um, that's just my thinking. Yeah, you, you, you know, no, you're you going to do the you trade. A, you bring up a really good point. If it's not going to work in March, it's not going to work in April. Yeah. That, that's my thinking. Uh, well, it's not that it won't work. It's just that, wow, if you hold steady, people, I, I think that a chunk of people have missed out completely getting in. I know people that got out in time or didn't do anything, but they've not put money back at all. They're waiting for the big pullback. So I'm, I'm looking well, at this me, and I'm saying, wow. Okay, I, no, I, I appreciate that. I think that, that was the best thing I heard is, is what you just said. So, so that, that's my option. So then the, here's my other question. I mean, we're talking 5,000 points, you know, down and then up. I mean, what? I, I just find this almost truly unbelievable, and it's almost like, okay, a Fed says one or two sentences. Does, does this just have a hallmark, um, you know, computer-based trading written all over? Uh, I, I, I didn't want to really talk about it now, but now you forced me to do that. Down and up and all over the place? Ben? There is only one thing that President Trump has left because he's going to get no wins whatsoever because of the divided uh, parties, and that's the stock market. Somehow, some way, this is a Trump market. He's made it the Trump market. It's his signature tune, and I think that yeah. one way or the other, he's going to have to make this thing work, and he's going to have to make it work all the way through the fall of next year. So. I think That's that major, point. major support is in the Dow, somewhere around the 24,500s at this particular point. But I think that we've already begun something that's very important. Well, you know, the other, to that point, Powell seemed to not really care, you know, who, who was president, but maybe, maybe between his statement at Christmas and now, um, you know, he got a few emails or maybe even a few tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would not be surprised if today he starts to assert some kind of authority in the wording. Yeah. And that's really what I'm looking yeah. at. So good luck with really your trade. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. All right, Basil. We're on the Thank roller coaster together. <laughs> Thank have, you. Have Thank Thanks. you for calling. That was Ben in Tallahassee. And we're going to go to Mark in Fort Collins. Mark, how are you? Good, Basil. How are you? Very well, thank you. You'd like hey, to look um, at... Talk, talk to me about the TVIX. I was looking at the VIX. Okay. It hit a 32-round number low today, I was, which was... Um, it hit that 32-round number low back in... Uh, Way back. October, back in October, times. right. Uh, no, um, that, was, the 32 was in uh, the... Hmm, the, the, 32, 32. Mm. And 10 and 10, 11. It was okay, the yes. Low so, this of both is, of those days. so, so what, what I'm looking at here, well, first of all, let me just st state very clearly my, for number of years here, I've been talking about the volatility index and I've used them as numbers. And what I've said is below the 15, 16s, is very positive. The market should have good, good, strong upside action, a lot of triple-digit numbers. As soon as it gets to the 16s, it kind of stalls. It has a lot of resistance. And when the TV, that, that is the VIX index itself, when it starts to get into the 18s and 19s, you've got to be very careful because money is being bought, insurance is being bought, 
And when it gets into the 20s, it's saying to you that you should see many triple-digit down, down days, high uh, double-digit S&P uh, pullbacks. And when it gets into the 30s, from the 30s up, that's when you're looking for a climactic turn. The last one was on the 26th of December at 36.20. We're now trading at 14.43 in the VIX index. So theoretically, if there isn't any news this week, holding in the teens, in the, in the, in the teens especially going towards the 13s and not towards the 16s, that should be bullish for the market. So... Have you got a moment because we've got a break coming up and I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about positioning, etc. Can you hold yep. on? Yep. Great. Okay, we've got Mark and Ford Collins. We're looking at the VIX. VIX just, uh, the Dow just dropped minus 13. Remember what we were looking at in the E-mini here with that cup formation breakdown, hitting the 200 period moving average, making the dreaded H, now plunging under it. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're looking at the volatility index. We just popped up a little bit. It made a low this morning at 15.19. It's trading at 14.70 right. Made a low this morning of 14.13. Trading at 14.70. This is leg G to the downside. There are so many things that we're looking at right now that suggest if there wasn't a Fed that could really spike the market up or spike it down, I don't know, if the Fed wasn't there today, I'd be very comfortable in looking at the VIX index starting to rally right now. So here we go. I'm going to go straight to um, to the question of Mark had of the, there was a low this morning 
at around number 32. When it comes to the TVIX, which is really the volatility index trading vehicle, I one of them, I a round number, yeah, it's kind of cool because it comes at a, at a low G and a D. Uh, it'll be great if it suddenly starts to move, but I'm not going to put any import on that. So, Mark, this is what I would say to you. If you were to prepare right now, and you just started a little nibble on the on the uh, TVIX at 32.31, you are subject to at least, oh, between you and me, we know that it could be a, f a 10 to 12% um, haircut if the Fed comes out and the market just suddenly skyrockets to the upside. If there's anything that is even a hint of negativity this market is now at this right as we're speaking at 1 no 12 what is it 12 31 p.m eastern time it, everything has to be perfect right now there's no room really for error because there's a lot of pricing into these stocks most of them look to me like they've gone three to maybe even seven percent overbought on a shorter term basis so yeah, they could go higher because overbought means that you can go even more overbought if the conditions are good. So I'm going. I do you ever short before? Do you ever buy the TVX before the Fed uh, announcement? No, I haven't. I was looking at it. I was thinking of maybe yeah. going half in, half a position. So, so let's now just say and then maybe half after, depending on if we get a spike or not. <clears throat> right. You see what I'm I'm looking at here is. Let's just say instead of guaranteeing that you're going to take a loss if the Fed comes out and the market responds, S sacrifice a little bit of that, that premium right now, because if the Fed comes out and it kind of, it's it takes a little while, but all of a sudden by 245, you're looking at the down minus 50, the S&P down minus six, instead of up 150 and plus 15, You've got time because what I think that's going to say is now there could be some kind of a pullback and don't expect that it's going to be we're down minus uh, 35 at 245. Wow, fantastic, because by Friday we should be down 700 points. I'm not sure this is going to work. There's just too many people that have missed the rally and that are going to keep buying. So I think it's going to be more lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. And then suddenly, if it is weak into Friday, it'll be like Tuesday or Wednesday of next week that out of the blue, the market just gets bad news. Boom, there's a very sharp sell-off. That's the kind of way I'm looking at it. So I think giving up a point on the TVIX, a point and a half, I don't think that's such a bad thing because if it starts to trade in the 35s at any point and holds there for one complete day, in other words, Whatever happens, the close that day is in the 35s. I think you've got yourself at least a nice pullback coming up. And then it might mean that the VIX, the TVIX, because it isn't real bad news, it goes up, but it doesn't have that one day five point move, at least not yet, but it at least give you a nice cushion. So here's my thinking. If, if you want, you could even nibble on, and I do mean nibble. I mean nibble because you want to get a real sense of how your position is acting when the Fed comes out. And then later you can do the adding or you can take it off and say, you know what, I, if I had a full position, I would have lost 12 percent. But I've got a little tiny position. I, it was a risk. I personally would say rather than take, take the risk, let's wait until 210 or 230 and you'll get a trade. Not only that. If you do get the trade, the way I'm looking at it now, because of what's, let me just even, let me go to, um, let's go to the S&P for now. Let's go to the S&P, and if the S&P at this particular point, which is down just two, the candles that I'm looking at says that the candle with the greatest support right now, especially with a little bit of a gap, is the open and close of 2743.50 on the 14th. 20, 27, so that's 27.40. That's, I mean, that's 30 points in the S&P. So if we gap down all of a sudden after the Fed, all of a sudden the S&P is down 12, 
you'll have about another 12 and then I think you're looking at support in that doji area or you're looking at support in the 14 period moving average of 2732 so I think it's going to be a stair step down and this is just such the market just takes this like it didn't need to see this at all not only that we're going to be looking to see whether the Fed talks about rates so that gold which has had a fabulous move if gold pushes up another 20 or 30 bucks from here that's going to mean that a lot of money is going to start looking at those commodities very favorably and they're going to start taking money out of stocks so this is really an important period and let me just get a little clue here let me just see what the dollar's doing yep the dollar's down 19 cents it says it's still in that consolidation phase wow i think this is a pretty important day today so i'm saying to you yeah you could you could nibble a little bit and then you could start adding or you could just have patience to wait if it's me i'm saying to myself you know i in a market like this why just in a in a split second lose 10 percent i'd rather have that 10 percent on my side and say okay now i kind of know what i want to do um, it's better that way. So I am, I'm in your camp. I'd be looking at the position of a TVIX, but you need the conditions to come together. And you'll know, I think you won't even have to wait till 2.30. I think you can know by 2.10, 2.15, pretty much. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you so much for calling. Good luck with the trade. Let me know how it goes. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, uh, folks, I wanted to do this. A bunch of uh, questions I got coming in, but I also wanted to do something else today. Okay, I've got, yes, I've got time. I wanted to show you something. If we go to the Amazon, if we go to the FANG stocks, look, nothing here, nothing to see. Amazon down 9 is 16.18. Netflix, minus, minus 4 uh, at a peak at 11E. Kind of way under the 40, 423 all time high of July, way above the 231, kind of in the middle of the range, right? Look at Apple. Apple up one, stuck in a little bit of a range at 171. The range is between 176 and 167. A, a break above is good, a break below is not so good, but where is it? It's nowhere. So, what's the Amazon? We did Fang, Fang, and uh, Netflix. We did, um, oh, Facebook. Facebook is trading down 35. So just stuck here, made a peak G at 172. I'm saying to you, this is a period that is very important because it's, we're going to see what happens. And now I can go to the, the, the areas I missed earlier that I didn't do. The TLT, big clue coming up here. It's down 41 cents. We'll talk about what are you looking for if there's a turn in the market to the downside here what if there's a push to the upside? We'll deal with that as soon as I get back. That's a Chapman Tiger Traditions Hour, Dow's down 16. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. 
For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So, folks, I like to look at rectangle formations when they occur at the top. When they occur at the bottom, when they occur at the top, we saw that yesterday. You remember, I wonder if I can find this. Remember, this is the one that we were looking at. I'll have to squeeze it. Uh, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Let me just do this, move it to the right. Squeeze and move to the right. Remember, <clears throat> a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. If it occurs at the top of a move, there's a real good chance it's going to break to the bottom side sharply. And that's exactly what we saw over here. Let me see if I can squeeze it even more. There it is, right there. You remember I was talking about, I sent to my subscribers to my opening call, I said on Monday night, I said, look how long this is lasting. We were, let's say Monday night would have been up to, yeah, well, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. I sent this out around about here, around about there, okay? Well, look, it went on and on and on, and then eventually it broke down. So I'm mentioning that. Why? Because I'm talking about the variations of sectors and how they're doing. So all of a sudden, because what is it, JP Morgan or something coming out with this whole Bitcoin stuff? So Bitcoin, GBTC, was once trading at 38.71 back in September, October. December of 2017, right at the end of the big move there, it goes to 38.71, and then it has a little bit of a pullback. It goes down to 3.76 a year later, tries to bounce, gets to the five area, and then retests and takes out the low. It goes to 3.66. So 3.66, um, now it's made the, the, the inverted. So this is the hammer. This is, sorry, this is the 6.6. Six. So this is the pattern that we look at when an arch formation, a lowercase h, becomes either a dreaded h or an m formation, retests the low. Do Are you getting higher technicals to be, give a new buy signal to buy mode, or are they failing? Well, in this case, it's it was perfect. It came out, they came out with the news yesterday, gaps up, and then today pulls back, and now it's trading at 484. It has a low today of 448. So suddenly, GBTC, the grayscale, Oh, it's changed its name. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, BTC. I think it's in play. I think it's in play, but you got to be very careful. It only trades during the daytime, during market hours. So if anything happens overnight, good luck to you. But this is saying to me that it's now got strong support in the 430 to 4.20 area. And at the moment, it can take out this high of 5.08, the high of the 8th of January. It suddenly helps the weekly 14-period moving average. This is the first time you've heard me in, what, more than a year say, this is now interesting. I think it's in play. That doesn't mean to say um, you can buy it and hold it. It means that it's in play because pullbacks now can be bought. You know where your stop is, somewhere around the $4.20, $4 area. Um, that's what you've got to be watching carefully. You mustn't close under 4 and rallies, you can, I don't know if I'd add to rallies, but I'd let them run and I'd have enough that I could take off 
Once it gets to the resistance at $5, if it breaks through and goes to 518, you can, you can, you can, as it takes out on a closing basis, 508, you can maybe put that back a little bit more. So you can just, now it's a game. Now it's in play, okay? That's number one. Why am I mentioning this now? Um, that if the market does pull back this afternoon, People are going to be looking at areas that, that were weak and that might play, come into play. One of those areas I'd mentioned before, I think he's probably in them, in the, not the metals that have broken out, but the metals that are kind of holding back a little bit. Want to be looking at that, certain areas like that. Maybe you even want to look at some of the commodities as just see if they're starting to find some kind of support. Okay, now I've got through that. Uh, question I had, NBEV. Uh, yep, that's... That's the stock that we were in. We're out of it now. Um, New Age Beverage Core, trading at 6.38, made a peak E, and now that's a down arrow. I should have put it 7.79. I'll put that in right there. And it's making an H pattern. I think that this is a peak, because it's a peak D, way under the previous 9.99 high of um, July or something like that. Uh, that was peak B mines. It had a brand new buy mode that went to peak A, B, C, and D underneath the previous high. I think this is going to take time. I would not be surprised if the marijuana sector, the MJ, is going to take a little bit of a timeout uh, before it starts its, its next big move. Timeout doesn't mean to say you go short or anything. It just says, have patience. You're going to get some really nice buys. We still remain long. Um, I, we've taken just a little bit off, and that's how it is there. Next question I had was, um, the IAI, and this is going to be really important to me. It just made a leg D in the daily chart right on the 200 period moving average. This is the iShares Broker and Dealer Security ETF. I think that this needs to pull back. It doesn't have to listen to me. I would like it to pull back. I'd like it to pull back. And then I think that this is the sector that needs. It led the initial thrust, and then it just stalled at the 200-period moving average at 61.47. It's trading at 61.27 right now. I think it needs a bit of a timeout, and then it should lead us for the next big move in the market. That's my thinking. Thinking is not doing. So right now, we actually have no position in this, uh, but this is on my, my list my bucket list that I have for subscribers, what we're looking at doesn't have to be this. It could be one of the players within it. But this is very important. I want to see by May, between May and June of this year, the IAI trading at 64.50 or higher, preferably 66 to 64.50. All right. Okay. That's what I want to do. A couple of things I still want to finish. Yeah, so we're about to go to a break in another couple of minutes, and then we'll have a final section. In the final section, I'm going to talk about this afternoon and the Fed. In the meantime, a question came up about the XLF. The XLF has done nicely. It really has stalled. You know, I, some people use moving averages. Some people don't. I know uh, um, Larry has never. I remember years ago, we were at a meeting down in Florida. We, we used to have these meetings, TFNN meetings, and we had, um, you know, everyone from TFNN, and then we would give classes, and we'd have talks, and it was just packed. It was fantastic. And um, one year, I'm not sure. This might have been the first year that Ra Larry and I were together. I think so. And uh, Larry Pesavant is just a, just a fabulous technician. And uh, Larry came on for his talk, which was just behind mine. Mine is going to be right after his. And he said, I don't know anybody, I don't know how it came up, but he said, anyone who uses a 200 moving, uh, anyone who uses moving averages, a 200, a 10, or a 9, or he said, I don't know. I, 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 I just, it's not for me. He said, I, I use my, I use my uh, Gartley's and my Butterflies and Fibonacci. And as he had said that, I could hear the people in the audience going, <gasps> you know. And I said to myself, whoa, 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 don't get upset. I mean, I don't, I ne at that time, I wasn't using any of his work. Uh, everybody has their own thing. But what I did learn is that you cannot, unless you experiment deeply in that particular area, 
You should at least have respect for it. And I think that's what actually Larry has learned over the years. He's really learned that some of these things, they work like anything else. Look at the 200 period, look how it's stalled. And I think that's wonderful. That's, you know, we learn from all these things. I'll be right back when I have the final segment coming up. We both know you've got what it takes to crush your goals with the will to make it happen. So why haven't you accomplished it yet? For most, the answer is fear. Fear is that limiting factor that stops us from getting what we truly want, but it doesn't have to. That's why on Wednesday, February 27th from 5 to 6 p.m., I'll be hosting my one-hour workshop, Overcoming Fear in Five Easy Steps. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, the 2018 Market Timer of the Year, author of Mastering Probability and an expert in human emotion. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain free access to this extraordinary workshop where I'll coach you how to bust through your barriers of fear. How you respond to fear is what sets you apart from the rest of the crowd. Look, this could be the most valuable hour we ever spend together. So come to the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your 30-day risk-free trial of Mastering Probability and take the next step towards the life you deserve. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark have launched a special for a limited time only. Save 25% off Primal Edge and Health Signals. Just use promo code HEALTH for Health Signals or use promo code PRIMAL for Primal Edge and save 25% off instantly when you sign up. All the details are available on each order page at TFNN. Certified personal trainer Nico DeHaan's newsletter Health Signals comes out twice a month and is packed with great information on health, fitness, and diet. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox, and contains a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. This sale won't last long. Sign up now using promo code HEALTH for health signals or PRIMAL for Primal Edge and save 25%. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So let's just go through this. Uh, we're back here. The Dow is down 16. means nothing. It's what happens in an hour and five minutes. So the GDX I've got here, if the GDX, which is trading at 2364, 2390 is the automated Chapman wave resistance. It just went right through the 2324 one. So let's see what happens here. Um, that the, I have no resistances until in the weekly chart until you get to 23. Oops, 23.02. No, that's not 23.54. So we're in the in some kind of resistance area. A snag. Then monthly chart is 25.09 and 25.51. So believe me, if this if the if the um, if the GDX spirals higher, let's see what would happen in, in the uh, DXY, which is the dollar. Dollar's down now 16 cents. The dollar has tremendous support, 95.75 to 95.44 in the uh, in the weekly chart, 96.24 in the uh, daily. So those watch 96 at 96.36. I would just say to you, if it starts to trade in the 95.87 area, that's just not going to be a good thing for the dollar. And just in terms of certain of the key ind indices, we look at the SMHs. The SMHs are now up 100. They're at 103.25 made a high today in the 104 area. There's a lot of resistance at 104.62 and 105.08. And uh, that, let's watch that. 
because that's going to be a clue. I think if the semiconductors start to pull back, that's going to be a hint that the market should follow. It usually does. So I just wanted to go through those things. Let's see what I've got for the VIX index, VIX.X. There we go. The VIX index, 13, a whole chunk of support in the 1459 to the 13 area. 17.39 is the daily resistance. <laughs> I don't know what it'll take to get there. The market will have to really take a dive. So I think I'm just saying get ready. This is a very important period because it will be a continuation of what we've got. If the Dow is up 150 points or more at 4 o'clock, S&P up 15. And if it starts to, it doesn't have to tank. If the Dow is just down 35 to 40 points, that's saying, you know what? We could get, enter, be entering a slightly lower highs, slightly lower lows period just to consolidate. And then we'll assess from there. And we'll have a lot more news by tomorrow. Great trading, everyone. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom O'Brien. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call. Hope you will find it as interesting as I do making it every day. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.